Now, the other thing about how we think about time is that it differs from uh, culture to culture. So we haven't, humans haven't invented just one way of thinking about time, but we invented many, many different ways. Let me give you just a few examples. So uh, in English, of course, we read and write from left to right. And uh, it's natural to then organize all kinds of things from left to right. So here, I'm showing you pictures of my grandfather at different ages. And if I gave you this set of cards, shuffled them, and said, please lay them out in the correct order, chances are you would lay them out exactly like this, from left to right. We consider this to be the correct order, the correct arrangement. But uh, people who read and write from right to left, for example, people who read Arabic or Hebrew, will organize these cards from right to left. Right. So uh, for them, uh, the direction of time goes in the opposite direction. And just to give you an intuition for this, um, here's a, a logo for a nutritional supplement for kids. And you can read this logo very easily, and you can see what it does for your child. Uh, when they tried using this in Arabic-speaking countries, they ran into some problems. Because if you read the logo from right to left, it becomes quite problematic and confusing what it does for your child. Now, uh, so far I've given you examples of how time can travel with respect to the body, either left to right or right to left. Uh, but it can also um, travel not with respect to the body at all. So here's an example. Um, this is a, an Aboriginal community in Australia that I had a chance to work with. They live on the edge of Cape York. Uh, they're the Kuktaior people. And what's interesting about languages like Kuktaior is they don't use words like left and right. And instead, they primarily rely, rely on words like north, south, east, and west cardinal direction terms. And uh, when I say they primarily rely on cardinal direction terms, I, I really mean that at all scales. So even for body parts, you would say, uh, there's an ant on your southwest leg, or move your cup to the north, northeast a little bit, uh, things like that. Even the way you say hello in Kuktaior is to say, which way are you heading? And the answer should be something like uh, north, northwest in the far distance. How about you? Uh, so imagine as you walk around your day, Everyone you greet, uh, you have to report your heading direction. Right? <laughs> that would get you oriented really quickly, right? Because literally, you could not get past hello uh, without knowing uh, which way is which. And uh, let's just establish that we uh, don't think like this. So everyone close your eyes for a second. Uh, and I can see you, so I can tell whether or not you've closed your eyes. Uh, point southeast. All right, you can open your eyes. I see points in every possible direction. <laughs> At least some of you are right. Um, that's good. So uh, people who speak languages like uh, Kuktai are actually stay oriented really well. Uh, they can point southeast without hesitation. Even young children can do that. Uh, but I also wondered, how do they think about time? So if they don't think about left and right uh, with respect to space, how do they lay out time? So remember, if I give you this task, I give you a bunch of cards to lay out, what would they do? So uh, here's an example. This is uh, one participant. They're sitting facing south. And this is a bunch of different card sets they've laid out. And what they've done is go from left to right in each case. Here's uh, another participant. I'm sorry, this is the same participant on a different day, sitting facing north. And they've laid everything out now from right to left. Here's a different person sitting facing east. And they've laid everything out coming towards the body. What's the pattern? It's the sun from east to west, right? So for them, time is locked on the landscape. It doesn't stay locked on the body. So for me as an English speaker, if I'm facing this way, then time goes this way. And if I'm facing this way, then time goes this way. And if I'm facing this way, then time goes this way. Very egocentric of me to make the dimension of time chase me around every time I turn my body. Uh, instead, for the Kuktai, or time always goes in the same direction with respect to the landscape, regardless of which way their body is facing. And this isn't the only way that time can flow according to the landscape. So for example, work by Rafael Nunez here at UCSD shows that time doesn't even have to go in a straight line. So for example, for the Yupno of Papua New Guinea, time uh, flows into the village at one angle. And then once it hits the village, it takes a turn and flows out at a different angle. And this has to do with the mouth and the source of the Yupno River, which are important uh, geographical locations. So people around the world have imagined all kinds of ways to organize this very basic dimension, right? Whether it goes left to right, right to left, 
There are vertical organizations, uh, organizations that go on the landscape in all kinds of different ways. Uh, there's a really rich variety that humans have invented around the world.